morning, everybody. Welcome back. Oh, yesterday we were level 911. Now we're at 930. I uh, just played a little bit yesterday. Um, took some downtime and played some Resident Evil, but today we're just gonna have our coffee like we do every day with my wonderful Raccoon City Police Department cup, and we're gonna play some some really easy professional mode. Um, you know. This time is more about learning than it is about, you know, trying to get levels. So we're close to that thousand thousand mark before they do the, the update. Um, they still haven't come out, or not they, but developers of Phasmophobia. So CJ and Lavender, DK, and Skinner, they haven't come out with exactly when they're going to be doing the update for the, uh, the leveling system or the custom games, but it's coming soon. So um, I'm going to go ahead and get into it, and I'm sorry for being late. Um, I was busy doing some maintenance with Bumblebee, who is actually chilling in the chat. I want to say hi. Hello. So, he's helping me out, getting everything a little bit better for you guys. So, And I appreciate it immensely. So, Anyways, talking too much. I'm going to just hop into it, and we'll see what happens. I know a lot of people are more... I, I tend to play the same maps over and over again. Um, we'll be getting into some other maps, don't worry. Um, it's just... <sighs> trying trying to, to, to express, you know, I kind of know what I'm doing and I kind of know what I'm talking about. So, I like to start out on the smaller maps, but we'll be, we'll be hitting some of the larger ones here shortly. We've arrived. Check the equipment and get set up before investigating. And remember to check the whiteboard for help. The ghost here seems to be linked to a cursed object. Go and take a closer look. Maybe using it will help your investigation. Remember, everything that he says has no bearing on your ghost hunting ability whatsoever. He might talk about light flicking. It doesn't matter. It's not going to be a mare. Okay. So, let's see. What do we have today? Get a ghost to blow out a candle. Detect a ghost presence with a motion sensor and prevent it from hunting with a crucifix. Karen, we have a Karen. I bet you she's going to be a fucking oh, banshee. Jeez. Yeah, fucking Karen. All right. Let's go see what Karen has in store for us. She's probably going to want to talk to our managers. I'm right here. <laughs> Hit my self-proclaimed manager. It's true, and you know it. Well, when I start paying you, then I'll call you my manager. Nah, I don't need to be paid. <laughs> Only whenever you start, you know, when you get partnered and you're making, you know, lots and lots of money. Yeah, I don't know if I'm going to get that far, and that's only because of my attitude. But we'll see. I mean, I made it <laughs> I made it to Master Sergeant, and then didn't. <laughs> Christ, this guy. Oh, Alright, so we, we've got a bunch of hiding spots so far. Alright, so um, as I'm meandering through here, if you've been watching some of the streams, I like to tell you, okay, hey, we don't have Music Box. We're on Tanglewood. Music Box always spawns in the baby's room, up on the little bear shelf. It's not there. Come down further in the hallway, usually there's a ghost mirror here. The ghost mirror you can use to see where the ghost is in that present time. It doesn't mean that that's its ghost room, it just means where it's currently at. Um, we'll come to the living room. I usually just kind of do a, a quick little scan to see if there's any bones or anything over here on the floor. Uh, they can be hidden by the carpet sometimes. Uh, the couch, uh, usually there's a hand or a rib cage or, or something on there. Today we have tarot cards. The tarot cards, you have 10 random chances at 10 different cards. Uh, they all have the same amount, um, or they, they do not have the same chance to be pulled. There's 10 different cards. Some of them are weighted more heavily than others. Um, we like to play with those, especially when we're playing with other people. You can ask Bumblebee about it. Um, I hate you for that. <laughs> so, uh, whenever you find the cursed object, this is one of six cursed objects, snap a photo of it. You're going to get some money for it later. So we're going to continue through the house. Had we not found those, we would go into the garage and we would be looking for the breaker. Usually the breaker spawns immediately on the left hand side on the wall. You can flip that on. And then over here on the trash can where it belongs is the voodoo doll. The voodoo doll is trash. You don't need to worry about the voodoo doll. And we have no hiding spots in the garage. We're just going to get out of here. It's pretty quiet. Um, from the garage, we can head straight down into the basement. Click on a light because you know that the power box is not in the garage. It's going to be down here, right adjacent or directly across as soon as you come downstairs. Come over here, give a little flick. Just flick a little bit with your fingers. Come all the way around back, and there will be a Ouija board sitting here. 
Oh, it's freezing. Freezing temperatures in the basement. Also, right here in front of the power box, sometimes there's a summoning circle. But, again, we've already got the tarot cards, so none of the other uh, items are available. We have freezing temperatures, so we're going to go ahead and put that in our little book. And it knocks out all the ghosts that have nothing to do with freezing temperatures. Easy. We're going to leave this EMF down here. We don't care about that right now. Turn a couple of lights on, just so that we kind of pinchers the ghost into its little location. We don't need all the lights on, just, just enough. Three second delay, good. That's a whole lot better than fucking 15 to 30. Alright, I'm gonna leave this here. I'm gonna leave the camera here. We're gonna go back out and grab some more stuff. We have not found the bone yet, but there is still two, two, three, three places that we haven't looked yet. We haven't looked in the master bedroom, we haven't looked in the kitchen, we haven't looked in the dining room thoroughly. Uh, I do not have tripods. Okay. So usually, when playing on professional, the first things that I grab after coming out of the house the first time is I'll grab a video camera, I will grab the dots, which is a laser grid sensor, and I will grab a book. The reason why I grab most of these is because some of the hardest evidence to find is some of the stuff that takes forever to get. So you want to get that stuff in there as fast as possible. I'm not going to talk about Nightmare Mode because there's no reason to talk about Nightmare Mode. Nightmare Mode is its own thing and I will make a video about it. I'm not going to confuse you and start talking about a whole bunch of different differences and that's just going to... It's going to make for a bad time. You're, you eat pizza when you're supposed to eat and french fry when you're supposed to french fry. We're going to turn around. We can set this video camera up. Oh. EMF2. Hello, Karen. We're going to set up our book in a main avenue of approach where the ghost might path. And we're going to put the dots right next to it. And the reason why... Oh, you are a banshee, aren't you, you little bitch? Okay. You're not a banshee. Damn. Maybe a revenant. Revenant seems appropriate for Karen. But one of the things that you want to think about when placing your dots and placing your book, some people just go into a room and throw it on the ground and put the dots wherever, you know, it, it doesn't matter. Wherever the dots go in that room is wherever you put the dots. Put the book buttoned up next to the dots as best you can. And the reason why I say that is twofold. One, when we're sitting here and we're truck jockeying, if the evidence, if the ghost decides to interact with the book, regardless of whether it's evidence or not. If it's evidence, it'll write in it. You'll see a black shadow being cast across all the walls. You'll be like, what the hell is going on? What that is, is the dots casting the shadow all across the room. So it's easier for you to see whether or not you got dots. Now, you might have seen something move over there. So the, the ghost just moved something on the shelf. The second reason why you put it right next to it is if the ghost decides to interact with the book and it is not a piece of evidence it will basically yeet the book away from the dots. You know, being a creature of habit, that you go down and you always put the book right next to the dots. You go down there and you're like, why is this away from... This isn't how I usually set it up. Pay attention to that. That means it's not a piece of evidence. And then you can just strike that off. If you're playing nightmare mode, don't do that. We can talk about that some other time. We'll go ahead and grab a spirit box, we'll grab another camera, and we're going to grab a crucifix, because we're at 67% sanity right now, and... That's, that's not really all that good. We are definitely within hunting range of some of these ghosts. We're not going to talk about specific ghosts until we narrow it down a little bit more. But, looking down in here, I can tell you right now, I do not see a ghost orb. It could be hidden by this, this right-hand shelf. We haven't seen dots the entire time that we've been sitting here. Um, there's not really whole much we can do with fingerprints down there. There's almost nothing down there that you can see that, ha that you can get a fingerprint response. So hopefully, we can get the ghost to move. Um, go upstairs, touch a door, uh, see if we can get dots that way. But for right now, blow out a candle with a mo uh, detected with a motion sensor and a crucifix. So we can probably dump. We're not. Yeah, we're gonna go down there. We're gonna go down there with the equipment that we have. We're not gonna worry about objectives right this second. And you might be like, Derek, why are you always crouching? We'll talk about that in a second. Set this up so we don't get attacked real quick. Turn the light off and try to use our spirit box. 
We might get dead here. Where are you? Are you close? Are you near? Where are you? Are you close? Are you near? Where are you? No spirit box response, but that doesn't mean that we don't have it. I'm not going to talk about the individual functions of the of the uh, the ghost items uh, right now. We're just kind of getting a generalized overview. There are some ghosts. Um, oh, see, so there were no ghost events, and I can teach you guys how to read this some other time. But you can see this spike um, from three to four. And you can see this previous spike over here. Uh, it was going up and then straight back down from 1 to 4. Or, excuse me, from 0 to 4. And then from 4 to 0 back down here. Now, there was no ghost event. So the ghost didn't appear. It, there was no ghost um, uh, little misty ball that came towards you. None of that. I'm outside the truck. And you can see that it is jumping at least four numbers. That means that is automatically EMF level 5. I will teach you guys how to read this, and in the future I will show you some uh, a visual representation. We'll go ahead and chalk off EMF level 5. If you're not comfortable with being able to read the, the activity board, go into the house and, and see if you get EMF 5, then come back out of the house and look to see, you know, like, oh, okay, this is the huge spike, this is what it looks like. Get familiar with that activity board. Sometimes you're going to have ghosts where it's just not giving you that EMF 5. You come out to the truck and you see it, and you're like, Okay, well, that just saved me a little bit of time. A lot of people do not like to come out and use the activity board. They like to get that, that physical verification off of the EMF. This is just another tool that takes place, you know, that, that, that fixes that. And it's a proven fact because that's one of the things that's broken in nightmare mode. We're not going to talk about that right now. I'll show you the visual representation next time we do it. Um, so right now, we did not get spirit box, but I'm not going to write it off. Uh, let's just say we did. Uh, the twins will drop off. Okay. We don't see a ghost orb, so the shade will drop off? None of them will drop off. Okay, so we don't have to worry about ghost orb. Dots is Jin, or Oni, I mean. Haven't seen that. Fingerprints is Jin, and ghost writing is shade. So we still need one of those three. Gotta get ready for where you're Alright, brother, go get ready. I appreciate all the time that you took this morning. That's him dropping out. Go ahead and grab one of these. Aww. And he threw me off. All right, what do we need? We need this. We need... I don't need that second crystal right yet. I'm going to try to complete a couple of objectives and get probably killed in the process. It is super active right now. So it could be an Oni. Don't base the, the the behavior or anything like that. Don't don't worry about any of that right now. That's that's strictly me just going off of ghost behavior. I'm gonna get this candle down here. I'm gonna put this down here. Get that right there. So we should be able to knock out two objectives real quick. So boom, motion sensor. You hear that little boop? Aaron gave us a little a little motion sensor, a uh, little extra money right there, and it just blew out our candle. Boom, right there. Karen blew out our candle. She does not like the candle. All right. So she is definitely patrolling over there. Uh, we're gonna try to keep her in the basement a little bit longer until we can get a third piece of evidence. There you go. Back up to ninety-five. Uh, let's go ahead and grab some salt. We'll grab a smudge stick. We'll start setting ourselves up for, for success while we're down there. Turn this light on real quick. Take this crucifix and put it there. A crucifix has a three meter range. That's nine feet. So visualize nine feet out in a circle. You know what a radius is? We've got diameter, we've got radius. Okay. Anyways, 
Here's our smudge stick. We don't have a lighter, so we're not going to worry about it too much, but we're at 90-something percent. I'm going to put salt down in, in certain spots. Okay, we're going to do this. Grab our camera. Come on, camera. There you go. We got five footprints. There's no reason why we needed to take that many, but I'm just going to show you. You can cycle through all your equipment really fast and get it. I'm going to try to do spirit box again. Where are you? Are you close? Are you near? Where are you? Are you friendly? Are you close? Where are you? Nothing. Throw this over here. See, it has not interacted with the book yet, and it's still right up against the dots. Now, what I was saying before I was interrupted earlier was, uh, I tend to take the salt. A ghost will pick a point, and it will walk the most direct path to that point. So if it picks, like, a rally point over here, and it's originally standing over there, the most direct route is straight along this path right here. So it's going to probably pass through this salt, pass through this salt, and then end up over here. That will give you an easier way to get your footprints. Put it in the middle of the doorways, um, just on inside or outside of the room. Um, be careful of carpets, because footsteps tend to go under carpets, and then it kind of fucks up your photos, or messes up your photos. And yeah, pretty much it. So the reason why I tend to crouch while I'm going everywhere, see, I'm up, I'm down, I'm up, they see me, I'm down. Remember that, I'm up, they see me, oh shit, I'm down. Crouch walk, if you can, everywhere. Um, the reason why is when a ghost is chasing you, if I am running and I run across uh, past this fence, right? I go around the fence, the ghost can still see me. But if I'm crouched, oh, the ghost can't see me because I already broke line of sight. The ghost will always travel to the last known position for their line of sight. Meaning he saw you, he or she saw you right here. This is where it's going to travel to. So hey, don't come around here and just sit here and hide because that's where it's going to go to. It's last known visual location of where it saw you. You're up here, it's going to, and you're running, it's going to, it's going to come around here and it's going to follow you all the way here. Even if you do this. As soon as you duck, that's the last place that it's going to look. You can keep going, go around the next corner, and then it will path to right here. Where it chooses to go from there is up to the ghost randomization. It could continue following back over this way and still see you. So just be smart about it. I tend to stay crouched because it breaks line of sight easier. That's all it is. Okay, so see, we're back down to 58% already. So this thing is messing with our sanity. Bad. We were up to 90-something. We're back down to 50. But it could be an Oni. could be a Djinn. could be the Djinn using its ability. Uh, we'll talk about those in a different video. Um, I don't think this is twins because I'm not seeing any twin type interactions, palm twin interactions. Then I can 20. Um, but there's another EMF level 5 spike right there. There was no, no, um, there was no ghost event that happened. The ghost may have moved. It has not set off the has not set off the motion sensor in quite some time. At least while we were out here sitting here talking, because I would have heard it, we all would have heard it beeping. So what I'm hoping is that it has moved upstairs. I'm going to take another pill. That should bump us up to 80 something. Yeah, we're back up to 80. And I'm going to take a lighter this time. And I know there's a smudge inside, so I don't need to, I don't need to take another smudge, but we'll take another, we'll take a, a motion sensor with us. We know there's a smudge inside. Do you have any fingerprints on anything yet? I'm going to turn this off. There's no reason for us to come in here. Not unless we want to try and loop a ghost. That will be fun to talk about and show you guys. Still has not turned off the breaker. Still has not turned off... Oh. Excuse me. Jeez. The bonking on this? Ooh, we have fingerprints. Look at that. That's what that bonking is. Okay. 
I've never, I, I've always heard it, but I've never, I've never understood what it was. It's bonking on the cooler. We have fingerprints. It is a gym. Tarot cards, footsteps, 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 fingerprints. So we could get the bone and a ghost photo. So let's let's look to see if we can find the bone real quick. Oh, right here. It can be anywhere in the house. And it can look almost like anything. It can be a leg bone, an arm bone, a jaw bone, a shoulder blade, a skull, a rib cage, uh, your pelvis. Pelvis is my favorite. Alright, so the ghost has not begun hunting yet. Let's look at our objectives. We still need to prevent it from hunting with a crucifix. So. Let's see, can we get any more can we get any more uh any more any more activity out of this ghost? Mm -hmm. I'm not gonna worry about getting the you know what, I'm not gonna worry about getting the ghost Oh it's it's freezing up here now. Really? Or was it just me running from the basement? No, oh, yeah, it's right here. Ghost is upstairs now. I'm not gonna play with the tarot cards. I'm not gonna play with the tarot cards. We'll go. We'll go do another ghost. It's 7.30 in the morning here right now, and I haven't taken any of my coffee. And now that it has moved, I don't wanna sit there and play with the ghost and try to get it moved. All right, make sure that you have your ghost circled. All too often, I'll click on something else and it removes the circle and then I finish and I'm talking and then I get distracted and I'm like, oh, great. See? Back. It was a jit. Add all back. I should probably start learning, or not learning, um, talking about the stats at the end to see whether or not it was appropriate for that ghost or not. You know, like if there's 60 interactions within 30 minutes, that was two interactions per minute. You know, stuff like that. So We'll go ahead and go to Willow Street this time. Oh, we need to buy some tripods. We've arrived. Check the equipment and get set up before investigating. And remember to check the whiteboard for help. The ghost here seems to be linked to a cursed object. Go and take a closer look. Maybe using it will help your investigation. Don't say. Oh. If you guys like the instructional piece of the videos, you know, give me a follow. You know, if you guys are seeing this later, give me a follow. I like to do this every morning. Um, I will be doing more detailed videos, uh, throwing them up on YouTube in the future. Uh, head on over to my Twitter. Uh, that's the easiest way to get a hold of me. If you guys want to get a hold of me, uh, you can message me through there. Um, Directophobic. Look it up on Twitter. Um, Got TikTok videos every now and then. I still need to do some video editing, so we'll put that there. Welcome back, Bumblebee. I appreciate you being here. And so, yeah, go check those out. Help me out. You know, click the little thumbs up. Click the little notifications. Uh, hit subscribe if you if you, you're so inclined. It's free. It helps me. Um, helps me to be able to create better and have better quality content for you. And if there's like a specific ghost that you're having trouble with, um, let me know. You know. Tell me what ghosts you're having problems with, so then that way I can try to help you. Um, especially when it comes to the new update that's going to be coming out, the customization. I'm sure you'll be able to take a ghost and be like, okay, I only want this ghost to show up. So if you can sit there and, and, and play with all, the, with all the functions of that, that'd be awesome. Thank you for putting that up. I appreciate that. All right. We got Stephen Knight. Ooh, DK's last name is Knight. DK is one of the developers. All right, find evidence of the paranormal with an EMF reader. Get a ghost to blow out the candle. Have a member of your team witness a ghost event. Stephen King. Stephen Knight. Stephen Knight. I can't even read. Okay, cool. Stephen Knight.
How about Steve Harrington? How about Steve? Yeah, put put Steve Harrington in this game. All right, he deserves to be in all the games. Steve the Hare Harrington. All right, we are on Willow Street. As soon as you come into Willow Street, usually there's a music box sitting right here. There's no music box. Make sure you grab these keys if the ghost is in the garage because it likes to play with the cars. Tarot cards will be sitting here on this end table. Your phone is about a 35 second delay. That sucks. I'm sorry. Coming to the garage. There is no hiding spot. Usually there's a second board over there that will show you uh, in another time. But there's a, a second board right here that you can go behind and hide in that corner with the particle board. There's no hiding spot there. No hiding spot here where those tubs in the box are usually sitting to get and hide behind. But there are, is a shelving unit back here, along with no Ouija board, which spawns on the dresser and the washer, or the washer and the dryer. You do have the ghost mirror, though. Take a picture of it. Don't forget it. I'm glad. Alright, so that's it for the kitchen. Nothing really going on. So there was no breaker in the garage. So we know that we need to go down into the garage. We've got to protect our sanity a little bit. Turn this light on because the breaker is all the way at the end of the hall. Other than the breaker, unless the ghost is down here, there's no reason to come in here. Hey, morning kiddo. Coffee time. Yes, absolutely. That's my sister Jordan. There's nothing in here. Nothing is disturbed. You guys will get used to, you know, after playing for a while, you'll you'll realize, oh hey, that's thrown on the ground. That's that's out of place, you know. I know the hammer's supposed to be there, so the ghost isn't here. These paint cans are still in play. Maybe check give a little check back here, see if the bone's on the ground. Other than that, we got a hiding spot. Nothing else to, down here in the basement. We don't need to come back down here unless it trips the breaker. Leave this light on. Uh, next thing I like to do is I'm just giving a quick little scan on the bathroom floor. Don't worry about that towel. Nothing's out of place. The toothpaste is where it's supposed to be. Close that door. Don't leave your doors open. Close the doors. On the right-hand side of the house is the kid's bedroom. You know it's a kid's bedroom because they have an awesome triple monitor setup. They have toys. And right in this little... Uh, I want to say wall locker in this cupboard down here sometimes the voodoo doll can spawn in here the voodoo doll will not, well, the voodoo doll will not be in there oh also in the basement you can get a summoning circle right there at the elbow of the hallway but since we have the ghost mirror it's not in there we do have a hiding spot over here in this back corner it'll be a little hard to get to if the ghost sees you it's going to come to a, about it's going to come to here if it sees you so you getting back behind here is not going to help. Turn that off. We don't need to go in there. I just heard it throw something. It's in the kitchen area. Sometimes this chair is moved, and it's moved over here into the corner. Right here. You'll be able to get back behind it, and it creates a larger wall that you can hide behind. So. Oh, see? I walked right over it. It's my favorite, the pelvis. No more reason to go in there. Now, we heard it throw something, so let's look. Turn some lights on real quick so you're not sitting in the dark. Oh, everything in here seems to be in order. Spoon and plate, maybe not in the right place. Plates might not be in the right place. Don't know yet. Oh. This is on the floor. That's not supposed to be there. Could be a kitchen ghost that just... We'll turn that off real quick. That's going to be EMF level 2. EMF 2. I think we found our ghost room, and it just threw a wrench. Let's go and 
set up the rest of our equipment, see what our sanity's at. We've been playing around in the dark for a little while. 78%. Okay, so we spent just about as much time in here as we did in the last house in the dark, nuts and around, explaining things. And our sanity was down in the 50s. So this ghost is not a super sanity sucker. And I have no tripods again for something. Three pieces of equipment, video camera, book, and uh, your dots, your laser grid projector. I'm starting to say laser grid because when I play uh, Ghost Exile, a different game, the uh, that's what I end up. Uh, that's what they call it, laser grid. Set that up right here. Remember, take your book, put it up against the dots. Turn the light off so you can see it from the truck. And then just go see what you can see. No sense in wasting any more of your sanity than you have to. Your sanity does drain over time while you're in the dark. Even while you're in the light. While you're standing in the light, it does drain your sanity as well. That right there. Not the best placement, but it's what we got for now. We know that the ghost is in the garage, so the dots should pick it up no matter what. See? There you go. We just got dots. Go ahead and put that in our book. That knocked out a whole bunch of ghosts. What else do we have? We have blow out a candle and witness a ghost event. Alright. We're at 75%. The only demon that can hunt us right now or the only ghost that can hunt us right now is the demon. And that's because it can hunt anytime it so chooses if it uses its special ability. Other than that, we're about to approach 70%. However, demon is not one of the ghosts that we have because of dots. So we are safe, at least for another, another few percentage points. We'll go ahead and get some crucifixes in there, and we'll grab a spirit box. This time I'm going to tell you about the spirit box. spirit box, the lights need to be off when you're using it. There are two little icons on the spirit box. There is an X and there is a little ghost. When you are talking, there is a black X that will show up, if it can hear you. Okay. If it can't hear you, or the ghost chooses not to listen to you, you won't hear the X, or you won't see the little visual X on it. The numbers don't mean anything, they just randomly keep going. Don't pay attention to the numbers. You're focused on the X and the ghost. See? X and the ghost. Let's see if we can get a spirit box response. Where are you? Are you close? Are you near? Where are you? Are you close? Are you near? Where are you? Are you friendly? Are you close? Are you young? Are you old? Are you naked? Okay. So, no spirit box response. We've been all throughout that room. If the ghost speaks to you, you'll know because you'll hear this either wispy woman's voice or a guttural male voice. Um, that is the ghost talking to you and the little ghost icon will light up. Other than that, you'll probably just get X response, or the little X. Alright, took about 7% of our sanity. We're at 65 average. Yep, see? The ghost just ran across the screen again. This is not the only place that you can see dots. You can see dots wherever you place it, if that is, if that is a piece of evidence of the ghost. There is a ghost that will not show you dots unless you're looking through the video camera and you are currently not inside the room itself. We'll talk about that when we talk about the actual ghosts. But for now, we've only got one piece of evidence. We still need two. I'm going to cross off Spirit Box because I feel like I'm fairly confident that we don't have that. I went all throughout the room and didn't get it. Be careful. There is a ghost that you have to be almost on top of the ghost in order to get a Spirit Box response. Fortunately, that's not one of these. All right. We've been in that room for a while. Haven't seen freezing temperatures.
What are you talking about, Jordan? Okay, anyways. Hasn't really been any EMF activity. I think I'm going to cross off EMF level 5. Oh, that's what you think it is? Okay. Well, we'll see. If it's fingerprints, it's a banshee. If it's ghostwriting, it's a thay. We will go ahead and take a sanity pill, just because. We will go grab a candle. Yes, we need a candle. So we will take this. You know what? We're going to set up two candles. That's a big-ass room. And it just turned on the, the car again. There we go. We're going to put those right there. What else do we got? We got a motion sensor. Let's set up this motion sensor. Now, another reason why I crouch is I like to make sure that I am not disrupting the motion sensors when I place them. So I put them just high enough that I can walk underneath them and not set them off. A lot of people have this misconception that... Oh, there's, there's the motion sensor. Oh, it just blew out that candle, and it just blew out this candle again. Look at that. Let's turn this light on. They have this misconception that you need to place them very low in order to get the crawling ghosts. That's not true. The ghosts also have like a, a pre-rendered hitbox. So as in a standing ghost. So even if it's a crawler ghost, it's still going to have a hitbox of a normal person. Oh, see, and there's dots again. It just ran through. Um, place them high enough so that way it'll capture the ghost. But so when you're crouch walking, because you want to break line of sight, you want to be able to do this, and this be the last known location that the ghost saw you, and get in your little hidey spot, as opposed to coming around the corner like this, and running over here trying to get in your hiding spot, and it can see you the entire time. Crouch walk. It looks weird to everybody else, too. It freaks everybody out. I am going to go and get a... UV flashlight to see if we can get a any fingerprints. And just walk past the motion sensor again. We'll grab this. Still at 90% sanity, and we'll grab a couple more motion sensors. Your UV flashlight is used for detecting fingerprints and footprints. Any writing in the book? There is no writing in the book as of yet. Go ahead and put this right here. Yep. And we'll go ahead and put this one over here. I'm thinking it might be a banshee, and the reason why is because it hasn't really touched any doors that we've been around to here. And the Thay and the Dio have waited um, an increased chance to write in the books. And it's been pathing all through there, and it has not chosen to interact with the book yet. We'll take this second book, and we'll get that in there. I'm going to take a lighter and a... No, I'm going to keep it. It just interacted with something a little bit ago. Hang on. So. There's no... I mean, everybody's going to get scared of the ghost. Everybody's going to get afraid of them sometimes, especially when they're hunting. But I'm kind of desensitized to it a little bit. Let's see. Has it touched this? No, it has not touched this. That we know of. Yep, no writing in the book yet, kiddo. Let's take another book and place it right there. We're just hanging out. We know where our uh, escape routes are. Can you do something? Can you show yourself? And another reason why I think it's the Banshee is because of certain type of ghost behavior. You go to the book. They have been known to rapidly age over time, even in the afterlife. From what we've learned, they seem to deteriorate faster within the presence of the living. 
their weakness. The Fey will weaken over time, making them weaker, slower, and less aggressive. Strength. Upon entering the location, they will become active, defensive, and agile. They're not really that threatening right now. It's kind of just doing its own thing. I would love to get some fingerprints. Let's close this door and see if we can get it to touch it. There we go. Set that up right there and it will definitely show us if we ever get any fingertips. We'll put that there in case it opens the door. I'm gonna go get a smudge stick. Another shameless plug, if you guys want to get a hold of me and try to hop in and teach you guys some ghost behaviors, you know, do a couple of rounds of this, or if you just need to get a hold of me for anything else, you know, please hit me up on Twitter, um, head on over to YouTube, uh, like, share, subscribe, uh, if you like what you see. Uh, I will be doing ghost tutorial videos in the future, and yeah, just get a hold of me. The drafter in you loves that house. <laughs> well, I'm glad. It's honestly my favorite... Uh, map to play on in the entire game. And I don't want to lose any more sanity yet. I just wanted to do stuff. Still need to witness a ghost of that. So we can talk about the two ghosts that were in between right now. The Banshee. Ooh, do I have a parabolic mic? The, the Banshee will give out a distinct scream if you're listening to it on the parabolic mic. I do. Maybe we can get it. Let's see. You'll hear the banshee scream if it is a banshee. Otherwise, you'll just you'll just hear uh, you know, some random nonsense. We're just gonna point it in that general direction. See if we can get it to talk to us. Steven. Do you want to tell us anything, Steven? Steven? Just hang out for a minute. Got a point six over there. Steven? That was not a banshee. If it is a banshee, it will it will let us know. You'll hear it scream. Steven. Steven. you want to tell us anything? Stephen Knight. That point six that we're getting, that's, that's what we're looking for whenever there's ghost activity. Sometimes it just stays there for a little bit. 1.7, it just did something in there. Steven? Steven Knight? Where are you? Steven? Still no writing in the books. Steven, where are you? Do you want to tell us anything, Stephen? Where are you, Stephen? Stephen, are you here? Where are... 
Steven. Where are you, Steven? Talk to us, Steven. Oh, it's still in there. Talk to us. Say something. What do you want? Yo, demon. It's me. Boy. Steven? Steven Knight. Morning, Panda. Hello. You always end up catching me like five minutes before I'm getting ready to, to pop, pop smoke. Steven? Where are you, Steven? The boy? Steven, where are you, Steven? Do you want to tell us anything, Steven? Where are you, Steven? Steven, 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 Steven? Steven, Steven, Steven. Even Stevens. Steven, Steven, Steven. All right, that's enough of that. I really want to see ghost, ghost prints. this on. Oh, it turned the breaker off. Okay. You know what? It has interacted with... It has interacted with a lot of stuff, but uh, it has not given us fingerprints. It hasn't interacted with the book, and it's waited to interact with the book. So. Even if I have to take the L on this because of ghost behavior, I think I'm gonna, I'm still, I, th I think I'm still gonna go with Banshee. Has not touched a door. Banshee would be fingerprint. Get it to work on time for once this week. <laughs> Well, we're about to close up shop anyway, so you have a wonderful day at work. All right, you. I've got some jobs ready. For really? You. That's interesting. You know why? We didn't see the ghost orb. If I would have turned that camera, I bet you we would have saw the ghost orb. That's why camera placement is important. So. 50 ghost interactions in 22 minutes. Not bad. Oh. Well, thank you all for joining us for this this brief little hour of ghost hunting and drinking some coffee. I'm going to finish mine here in a second. Hopefully somebody was able to take something away from this. Um, again, uh, if there's a, a certain type of ghost that you're having trouble with, uh, hit me up on Twitter about it. Let me know. Um... We can talk about it offline, or you know, you, I can I can bring you into the party and we can talk about it, or um, you know, check it out on on YouTube. You know, hit me up on YouTube. Um, head on over there. You can find me at both Twitter and uh, YouTube, Arachnophobic. Uh, you can also find me on TikTok. I'm going to be posting a lot more little snippets of of you know everybody throwing their bits at me and showing me their bits and sending me bitty pictures and. Know, trying to scare the hell out of me while I'm trying to do my ghost hunting. So, um, like, share, subscribe, follow, click the buttons, notifications. That way you know when I'm online. Uh, I stream my little videos for ghost tutorials from 6.30 to 7.30 Central Time. So 7.30 to 8.30, or excuse me, from 6 to 7. 7 to 8, 6.30 to 8 in the mornings uh, every day. 
So you can find me here. And if you got any uh, got any information or feedback or anything, please send that my way too. And uh, thanks for hanging out with us. Thank you, Bumblebee, for all of your help this morning. Uh, Jordan, I'll talk to you later. Panda, thanks for dropping by. And to our fourth mysterious guest who's been lurking a little bit, uh, thanks for hanging out. So you all take care. Have a wonderful day. And I will see you here tomorrow. If I can learn to hit buttons. <laughs>